too far gone to tell me with all the drugs they were on, but they wrote it down. There's a message somewhere at their farm barrier. We just need to find it. Look out! my gun in the crash. Barry was nowhere to be seen. Barry! Barry! Oh, man, you're okay! Jeez, it's good to hear your voice! I was trying to get out of the car, but the ground gave way! Man, what a drop! And don't worry, your cutout is fine! <laughs> the Forget cutout, that. okay. Are you okay? I hit some bushes, didn't get a scratch! There's no way you can climb down, though. It's like a sheer wall. Ah, Al, there's something moving down here. Barry, it's a taken. Use a flare, Barry. Oh, yeah. Barry, are you all right? <laughs> I'm good, Al. I'm great. Guess you never messed with anyone from New York City before, huh? Is this in... Hold on. Yeah, no. For some reason... This looks... Yeah, it just... Your way to the it looks house. smooth. Like, not in a bad way, but just looks Barry, nice. Barry, just wait for me, okay? Ow! I'm not staying here! It's suicide! I'm going to the farm! I'm gonna go ahead and secure the area! You can catch up! Don't worry about it! I'm on the case! Now he's a Rambo. This would turn into a disaster. He has the cut out. Up with Barry. <laughs> Just him running away with the cut out like a little goblin. Like it's just precious. My precious, my cut out. Please, don't do this. Pablo, wait. When he stopped the car at the Anderson farm, Walter felt relieved. Oblivion was close at hand. The brothers wouldn't miss a jar of moonshine or two in the booby hatch. But then he saw the man on the porch, and he knew who it was. Driving for his life and knowing it was useless, he didn't realize he was crying until he couldn't see the road for the tears. I have no idea who they are referencing there. What is, what is that up there? I see something. Where's this? Oh. And oh. This is death. I'm going over here to see what that shiny thing is. How is this man so out of shape? Well, I mean, he is a writer. Spends most of the time in South Park. No, no, there's no need for that. That was unnecessary. I just want my coffee, man. Oh, God. It's alive, too? Everything is just trying to come out again.
Agent Nightingale stared at the passed out rider. The man was sleeping off one hell of a night. Nightingale felt a stab of envy at Wake's oblivion, but he had a job to do. He put the gun to Wake's head and almost became a murderer. His hands shook and his throat felt tight and dry. Biting his teeth, he tried again to pull the trigger. He lost the nerve. Wake stirred. Nightingale would have to settle for an arrest. Is there something over here? There's gotta be reason you can come over here. Or not. Like, why wouldn't they put some? Mm, no, this is just a faster way down. I'm an easel. Is this not him? I could sense the movement in the woods ahead. Facing the enemy without a weapon was dangerous, but I had no choice. Those batteries. Or not. Never mind. You can give them. I don't need them anyway. They're not heavy duty. No. Shoot. Go away. I don't have money. Is that the Anderson farm? A car was driving away from the farm, headed in the same general direction as I was. For all I knew, it was Barry, caught in the consequences of leaping before looking. I'm gonna come now. Is it not gonna thunder again? No, no. what? Bruh, rise to look away. Heavy duty flashlight? Hello, take it? Hello? He was kind of struggling there for a moment. Lithium battery. The car was heading for the cabin up ahead. It wasn't far. If it was Barry, I would see the damage soon. I had seen it in my dream. It was a strange spaceman or a diver in a bulky suit. He was the one who'd been placing the pages on my path. The dark presence followed the choreography laid out to it in the manuscript, growing stronger and stronger, moving like a storm from one scene of destruction to the next. But it was still bound to follow the story and chained to the dark place it came from. When the story reached the end it longed for, it would finally be free. So who is the light?
Oh, I thought that was the farm. They played me. Ah. The storm raged on as the Anderson brothers walked unsteadily away from the clinic with the other patients in tow, knowing that this time they wouldn't return. The darkness around them seethed with horrors, but Tor and Odin were unafraid. Their eyes glinted with guile. They knew every secret path, and there was blood on their hands. They had fought these shades before. Ooh, gun. Someone had left a gun behind. Now I had a fighting chance of reaching the farm. Anything around the back? Oh, many. Who puts this many bear traps out here? It's unnecessary. As fast as I can for this man with bad cardio. I could see the car, but there was no sight of the driver. Hello? Anybody here? Ah! Barry! Ah! again for the moonshine you know it makes you see they're they're not gonna miss it they're in the loony bin my buddy Danny I lost him something's gone wrong with him it's not him like a real bad follow-up to a real good movie the best friends, suddenly the bad guy, who, who wrote this crap anyway. I've run through every possible course in my head. If I continue like the Dark Presence wants me to, the story I'm writing won't save Alice. It's a horror story, and it's going to kill her, and me, and everybody in this town. No one will survive. Darkness will consume everything. This is what it's wanted all along. It will be free, unstoppable. 
It used Alice to get to me, dangled her in front of me to keep me going. It was never going to release her. I'm going to change this. I'll escape. I've written myself into the story. I'm now the protagonist. This feels like a terrible risk, but it's the only way to save Alice. I'll be bound by the events of the story just as much as anyone else who's been woven into it. The story must stay true for this to work. There have to be victims along the way, near escapes, cliffhangers. In a horror story, it can't be certain that the hero will succeed or even survive. He almost has to die. I'll write my own escape into the story next. I need help. Zane's going to be the one who will help me. I'll make it happen. Still a good distance away. I'd need a car to get there fast. Is that it? Okay. What is For a second, I thought you could see somebody in there, but it was just the tree. If Barry wasn't up here, he was probably in trouble down at the farm. For a moment, I felt bad for doubting him. After all, I made it this far myself. But Barry was Barry. can go up here to that tower and also visit this um, house. I don't know why it stopped me for a moment. I'm gonna take this guy. I guess you can't go to the tower, can you?
Is there something over there? Oh, there is. I gotta go get the loot. I could smell the loot. to be some kind of rock stars, but it hadn't really sunk in until I saw the stage. Al! Run! They're coming! There's too many of them! God damn! I'm so glad you decided to go it alone, Mr. Bronson. Shut up and shoot! Ow! We have to fight them all! I can set off more of the fireworks from here and help Damn. you out! I, they kind of actually made, they made a good song. I'm gonna be honest, this thing is not bad. For... Supposedly, like, you know, two old guys in their prime days, I guess. Excuse me, sir. Ah, oh, no, the flashbang took too long to go off. And someone. Wait, can I use. Oh. Oh, oh there's no need for this. Ooh, what is this? Heavy duty land? Excuse me? Oh, that thing blasts. Ah. They just have too much accuracy for these axes. Is that the pump? I'll be taking that. Pump action shotgun for everyone. Get out! Woo! 
honestly, this is rather enjoyable. I'm living on this. That's a good throw. I'll have to do that. How did that happen? <laughs> that was awesome! Bright Falls, rock and roll capital of America. Seller, no reason to worry. Your cutout's good as new, right where I left it. I'll come back for it once we have the place secured. Yeah, that's been my biggest worry all this time. <laughs> we need to get this thing moved out of the way. This is as far as I got before they ambushed me. Hey, I think Alan Wake here has something to say. Uh, what's that, Al? Ooh, I'm Alan Wake. I'm always right about everything. And if I don't get my way, I'll sulk all day long. I'm always intense and moody. It makes me very attractive and mysterious. Right now, I'm just standing here because I need my best friend Barry to carry me. But that's okay. I can just take him for granted. I think I see what you did there. Yeah, it was pretty good. You want me to do my imitation of Barry Wheeler? No? Thought so. Wow! <laughs> you look at that thing, Al! They really went all out with this Viking crap, didn't they? Look at all this stuff! They must have done okay for themselves, so how come I never heard of these guys before? And this from the guy who learned about Ozzy Osbourne through reality TV? Is that reflecting? Oh, it is. Sleep. We all spend oh, a few oh, night spring. Soft Man. Embrace, somewhere Who's between memory. Hey, oblivion. remember when I got you that gig? But your first real writing job. What got you started? Ooh, is this one of your episodes? In night spring. Tonight's episode. The Dream of Dreams. Eh, that's by someone else. We join Mr. Jones as he explores the endless dreamscape, only to be brought to a sudden stop by a decidedly mundane situation. A long line of people. Hey, Jones, right? Listen, we're gonna have to wait until his highness over there is good and ready. Oh, wow, who's that? You don't know him? What are you, new? He's the guy dreaming us. Well, not just us. He dreams everything. All of this. But wait, no. I'm the one who's dreaming. I'm asleep. Isn't... isn't this my dream? Oh, yeah. Sure. Get real, pal. You're just another dream. I'm a dream. You're a dream. The weirdo in the diving suit is a dream. And the girl made of smiles and sunshine is definitely a dream. But I'm pretty sure I'm dreaming this. Well, maybe you're a really confused dream. What am I, a shrink? All I know is I'm going with the smart guys. And they say that's the guy doing the dreaming. Right there. I don't know what that means. It means we keep him happy. No sudden falls. We make sure he has his clothes on when he goes out in public. No chases where the monster is nipping at his heels and he runs like crazy, but his legs don't seem to get him anywhere. None of that. Because if he wakes up in a cold sweat... Oh... Uh... Yeah, precisely. So we wait till he wants to move on. Keep things nice and calm. Hey! 
Something... something's happening here. Yeah? What's that? What? Can't you hear that? Oh, God help us, it's an alarm clock. Oh, it's you, isn't it? Please, man, I got a wife and kids. Please don't wait. How long have I been recording? Let's see. 30 minutes. Um... <clears throat> I'm, uh, I'll keep going a little bit longer. It's nineteen seventy six. Madness reigns at the Anderson farm. Contrary to all logic, the headiest ingredient of their moonshine is unfiltered water from Cauldron Lake. The Andersons feel like gods. Odin can't stop laughing. He contemplates cutting his eye out. Tor runs across the field, naked, shrieking, hammer in his hand, trying to catch lightning. Their songs have power. Something ancient is stirring in the depths, coming back. So that's why the he has a missing eye. Imposing. Almost like a battering ram. I don't think that was meant to happen. How do you get up there? Is that where I'm going? had quite a production going on. Oh, you know what, Al? If we make it through this alive, I'm gonna start representing them. Yep, sell this stuff online, maybe get a reality show going, release a new single. Good luck with that, pal. Hey, you find us a way out of here, okay? I'm gonna take a closer look at this stuff. Hey. 
as you regular listeners know, I tend to work through the night, but I'm not the only one. Deputies Mulligan and Thornton are taking a couple of moments off their busy schedule to join me here in the studio. Boys, how busy are you now? Deerfest is almost here, isn't it? I, I bet that keeps you in business. Pretty busy, yeah. Actually, Pat, we've been real busy with other stuff. Which concerns an ongoing investigation. We can't talk about that, Thornton. I wasn't gonna say anything. I was just saying we got, you know, other irons to fry. And how would you compare your workload to last year's? Things have seemed relatively peaceful to me, but people do tend to get a little wild this time of year. Oh, it's wild, Pat. It's pretty wild. There's been all sorts of trouble this year. Vandalism, fighting, public disturbances. A lot of people gone missing, too. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty much the uh, usual stuff, Pat. Uh, just, you know, uh, a lot more of it. Now, is it just me, or does Deerfest get wilder every year? People seem to be more drunk, at least, or they start earlier and younger. Oh, it's definitely not just you, Pat, but... Definitely, Pat. Hey, I'm talking here, Thornton. Uh... Oh, shoot, I lost my train of thought. Not just me. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's wilder, Pat, but actually most of the trouble seems to be coming from grown men. People who ought to know better, you know? Kids are doing fine this year. Well, that's nice to hear, at least. Boys, I want to thank you for stopping by. I'll let you get back to your patrol. Sure thing, Pat. Yeah, sure thing, Pat. side of the field. It wasn't far now. I wasn't worried about trusting the ramblings of two burned-out geriatric wrecks. They had the goods. an hour, get out of here. Oh my. Not what? No, it's running away. I did not expect that, though I should have. Interesting atmosphere. Ah, uh, Al, is that you out there, buddy? Yeah, it's me. Hey, let's go, man. I 
think we're gonna have to work together to open this gate, Al. It looks pretty heavy. Ah! Go, 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 go. I think that's the farm on the other side of the field. We're almost there. This farm is a crazy place for crazy people. We should feel right at home then. Val. Interesting. Come on, one more game. Very Do into Viking thing. stuff. The lights are out. I guess we better check the fuse box. The power downstairs was out, but I was sure I could fix that at the fuse box. Anything in here? Coffee. You know, this place looks kind of lived in. I thought the Andersons were on the booby hatch. Oh, yeah. God's name. I don't think the they truth. keep too close an eye on them at the clinic. They seem to slip away a lot so they can get wasted. Nope. Again, Alice's screams rang in the stillness of the night. I saw myself run toward the cabin, flashlight in my hand. I followed my past self. I was an out of body observer. A time traveler in a crazy drunken dream. This was the beginning. The night Alice had disappeared. The mystery of what had happened during the missing week was about to reveal itself. Get it? Those guys sound awesome. Of course, we need to find where it's coming from. That's the message the Andersons talk about. That's the whole reason we're here. Lady of the Light? Oh, that's gotta be, what's your face, the crazy lamp lady from the town. Cynthia Weaver. Right, must be. Okay? We need to find Cynthia Weaver. We'll stay here for the night and head back to town as soon as it gets light. Hey, Al. Lots of hours before dawn. Might as well get some rest. And by rest, I mean drunk. Come on, Barry. This is... Yeah. What the hell? I'm gonna stick by you, no matter what, ever, Al. Sure, like a brother. I'm a writer, goddammit. Correct. If I just wanted to, I could write ten books a year. And and they'd be the best books that year. No, you couldn't. That's right, I couldn't. But I could, because I'm a writer. What? What do they put in this stuff? I feel like my brain is coming out of my nose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get the recipe off of those coots and be a, a, a booze millionaire. I just miss her, Barry. I just want her. <laughs> Yo, oh no, this is I getting know. too realistic. Oh. oh. It's gonna be okay. We're gonna make it okay. Average drunk people. <laughs> There's no reason for that to be funny. I'm coming! I'm coming! 
It was a crazy, drunken dream. And yet, it was more than that. It was the truth, a suppressed memory unearthed by the Andersons' moonshine. I was there, an out-of-body observer. This was the night Alice and I had arrived at Bright Falls, the night Alice had disappeared. I had a chance to find out what had happened. I remembered being surprised to see the cabin dark. Alice would have never turned the lights off. thinking, I caught a glimpse of her form underwater, sinking into the darkness. <sighs> Diving after her was the last vague memory I had of that night. After that, the next thing I could remember was waking up behind the wheel of the crash car and finding the first pages of the manuscript. <sighs> I couldn't find her in all that blackness. I must have thought she drowned. Alice! Jagger had Alice, Alice. and so she had me. Alice! <coughs> I'd been easy prey. Look at the cabin. Is there someone in the window? Alice? Maybe she didn't drown after all. Maybe she's inside. Alice! Yes. The dark presence had touched me. She had dug her nails into my brain and used me, made me her puppet. She must be here somewhere. Maybe upstairs in the study. Alice! Yes, that's where she is. You can apologize. Alice! You laugh at the whole thing together and put it behind you. Alice? She's not here. You were foolish to think so. No, she's dead. She drowned. No, no, no! It's your fault your wife is dead. You are guilty. All she wanted was to help you right. You killed her. Ah! Oh, hush. There's still hope. Cauldron Lake is a special place. Here, you have the power to change things. She wanted you to write. I will tell you what to do. You can write her back. The story will come true and all will be well again. She had Alice, and the manuscript was the ransom for her. Yes. I'll write. I'll fix it. I'll bring her back. I'd written for days, a week, almost a complete manuscript of a novel entitled Departure. Jagger had been my editor, whispering in my ear, making sure that the unfolding story would make her more and more powerful. I thought I was saving Alice. Even with the cobweb she put in my head, some part of me had been aware enough to write my escape into the story, to bring a light into the cabin to release me before I could finish, to interrupt the horror story before the ending, where darkness consumed everything and everyone. Zane was weak and far away, but I had written him into the story and his light had been enough to set me free. It isn't here now. I'm here because it was written. I brought the light to set you free. You must hurry. You will know I'm here. It will be back soon. It stole the skin of my armor a long time ago. She looks so old.
I had woken up, confused and groggy, my mind consumed by darkness and fear. All I could do was to escape. The week spent in the cabin had taken its toll. I was barely conscious and fading fast. It had to have cost Zane terribly, thrown him even deeper into whatever dark place he now haunted. But he had managed to weaken the dark presence, kept me safe that night. That's right, James Joyce. It's your fault, and you're gonna pay for it. There's an old tarot with mystery of Tom the poet and his muse, and a magic lake which gave a light to the words the poet used. Now the muse she was his happiness and he reigned about her grace And told the stories of treasures deep beneath the blackened ways Till in the stillness of wonder and still in its misty crown The muse she went down to the lake and in the waves she drowned And now to see her love set free That's 
Now you reshape destiny. 